Solomon's Tales, episode 2. Oh dear. No recaps. You don't need them. Watch the first episode. Proper first day one in Thailand, Nana Hotel. <coughs> Solomon, he wanders off all around Bangkok buying clothes for the day, looking around, chilling. One in the afternoon, it's a taxi back to the hotel. It's got a few shorts and shirts and things. He's got some knockoff sunglasses. And he thinks, right, this is the start of the holiday. And gets out of the taxi, turns around and thinks, right, at the front of the car park, along the front edge on the side of the road, on the pavement, it's about 12 girls there. He's right, I'm going to get the girl now. And he's got his bags in his hands and he walks back to the edge of the car park, pays the taxi driver, looks at the girls and they're all staring at him and a couple making comments. He looks at this one, she's quite tall, very long hair, really, really pretty, beautiful. And he sort of nods at her and she approaches him and he says, as always, negotiate the price. He knows the score, he's clever, he knows everything. I want some massage, I want a massage, aerobics for a few hours, how much? And the girl turns around in this very smiley way. One thousand baht please. <laughs> in a man's voice. <laughs> Of course, he, oh, I'm sorry, my apologies, I didn't realise you were a lady boy. The lady boy sort of pulled her face and walked off. Whew, that was a close, this holiday may be hedonistic, but he doesn't want to go that way, it's only with girls. <laughs> One thousand baht, please. <laughs> he just immediately looks at the next girl, who was pretty, small quite well endowed on her chest, so he nodded, come over, thousand baht, go for it, grabs her, off they go. She even gave her one of her, his bags to carry. <laughs> and he had afternoon fun. All is well, everything's fantastic. Girl's gone, shower, change. Off, decides Western food, round the corner, KFC, has a KFC. Right, he's ready for the evening. Nana Plaza enters opposite the hotel, entrance is open, three to walk in, bar both sides, in fact a couple of levels of bars, beer bars, inside more bars and oh it's just a crazy place. He goes in and he thinks I'm going to start at the top and work my way down and uh, see if I can find myself a girl from a go-go bar that is stunning. I want today to be the stunning girl. And he goes up top floor and there's about six bars up there, go-go bars. He starts the one side, goes in, has a beer. No, didn't catch his fancy in any of the girls. To the next one, the same again. Top right hand corner goes in that one. It's all lady boys. So he's like, ah, oh, doesn't even have a beer. He comes back out. Along to the next one. I think it was Rainbow Sun. Goes in there, or whatever the bar was called, and he hadn't been in this one before. Some lovely girls, but there was a like a glass wall. Um, looked like it was sort of a room behind glass. And it looked like some shower heads or something. And the Mama San came over to him and he sort of, what's that shower show? Never seen that before. Orders a beer. Show soon, yep. Show's coming up. Sure enough, a couple of girls come into this little room behind the glass. Lots of soap and have showers and dance around with each other. This really took his fancy. He thought, that's amazing. And one of the girls who did this shower show. I mean, it's still quite early in the evening. He thought, oh, she was stunning. Pulls the mama san over. Is that girl available? Does what? What is that girl like? What does she do? Is there anything special? And the Mama San just gave him some rough ideas. She's pretty new. She's pretty. Don't really know, but nice girl. He 
he says, can I talk to her? And the mama san quite happily bring the girl over after she's changed. The girl comes over and he buys her a drink. Starts chatting. Seems a nice girl. Very, very pretty. And after watching that shower show, he's like, mm, okay, let's go. Short time again. He's not planning on taking a girl for the whole night. It's just short encounters. Um, thinks it's less problems that way. And he pays the bar, a bit more expensive because it's a go-go bar. Stunning girl, off to the hotel. It's early, but we'll, oh, we'll see what happens. And he has a very energetic few hours. Very energetic. <laughs> He's worn out. I think the jet lag's cooking. Jet lag is kicking in. Um, and after a few aerobic sessions, he's, oh, that's it, done. Girl was beautiful, and he replicated the shower scene with her. <laughs> Sent her on her way. He was bushed, and he called it a night. He thought, no, I'm not going back out again. But he's had one full day and one evening in Bangkok after landing. Already, is that three encounters? <laughs> this is going to be one hedonistic holiday. Oh, and it's going to cost a fortune. It soon adds up all this. Solomon decides <coughs> sleep and he goes to sleep. Again, a couple of hours later, he wakes up. The jet lag is just not letting him sleep. He's had quite a few beers. And he's restless, he thinks, oh dear, I'm going to have to get up, I'll just go and get a beer. He jumps out of bed, just puts some shorts on, flip flops, just a shirt, grabs a couple of thousand bars, throws his phone, everything in the safe, locks it all up, so there's nothing in his room apart from clothes and off he goes out the door, locks the door, downstairs to the lobby, and as he's walking around by the lobby he notices to his left that the nightclub's open. He'd heard about this, lots of stories about this nightclub, famous nightclub, freelancers disco. All the girls that maybe they worked at bars and finished, being bar find and they finished with a customer, another place to pick up guys. He looked through the doors, double doors, and he didn't notice many foreigners in there, it was all girls. And he thought, well, I'm not going in there, I'm going to get a beer across the road at Nana. And he walks out of the front doors of the hotel complete surprise as he walks through the doors in the car park it's as if the hotel had opened the doors to the nightclub and prior to that club opening the car park was a, a no-go area for girls and freelancers they all had to stand at the front outside the hotel along the wall applying for business but the car park was full of girls Maybe it was 30, maybe it was 100, it's hard to tell, but as soon as he walked out of the doors, most of the girls were looking the road, towards the road, thinking customers would come in to the club and they would jump on them. A couple of the girls spotted him coming out the door and he stopped in his tracks and these girls screamed at him. Immediately, the whole car park were full of girls turned around and they screamed at him. For a second he sort of looked around and thought what this is what i call the robbie williams experience if you ever get your chance in life to stand in that hotel car park and experience it it must be like robbie williams is stood on stage and the audience are screaming at him don't get it wrong all these girls screaming at him they're not screaming at him because he's a handsome gentleman He's got a body to die for with a six pack. No, they're screaming at him because they want his wallet. <laughs> and he stands there for a second. Unbelievable feeling. In shock, but there's all these girls and he thinks, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I want a drink, I'm just gonna risk it. And he starts walking through them and they're all grabbing his arm and shouting at him and he's like, oh no. He keeps going. 
he get, it's only about 30 meters to the entrance and he gets there and there's more girls outside you think blind what the oh never seen anything like that i thought he knew it all checks traffic crosses the road there's a bar dead opposite a beer bar facing in he thinks i'm gonna go there and sit on the front it's like a perch there and i can watch what happens this is new experience and he's rubbing his eyes waking up he goes in gets up at the front there's quite a few guys already there perched along gets a beer and he's sat there now facing the hotel car park entrance and all these girls and he's watching people watching he can't believe it it's there's just seems like a a sea of girls beautiful beautiful girls and he gets chatting to a guy next to him and a guy saying that got to go in the club it's a really good night some beautiful women and don't have to pay bar fines and fantastic and the guy next to him says i'm going in the club now and he thinks well i finished my beer he thinks well, maybe i'll go in and have a look and he says do they charge to go in and he says uh yeah 100 baht i think it was um but yeah he said the girls will all want to come with you and um if they're with a foreigner they get him free so he said grab a couple put them on your arm and walk in pay 100 back then you go and it makes their day and uh, you can have a bit of a dance and a drink and he thinks i'm coming with you off he goes solomon's like come on and they walk across the road sure enough the girls are all over them <sighs> oh anyway he grabs these two keeps going for the tall ones I'm more than likely lady boys but he grabs the two on the arm they walk in feels like a king two beautiful guys girls whatever on his arm goes to the desk little little desk and there's guy there gives him a hundred baht guy gives him a little stamp on his on his wrist reminds me of the 70s and on this wrist in he goes girls get him free anyway push go away now girls i'm in and they're trying to like oh buy me a drink he's like, no 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 you're in leave me alone the other guy comes in with him and they make their way to the bar and it's not that big in there but there's lots of girls lots of girls I think if the girls go in on their own, they have to pay. But this guy said, oh, the girls in here are incredible. A lot of them come from a, a bar called the Therme Bar. Now again, Solomon had heard about this. This is a famous bar where some, all sorts of crazy women go to. It wasn't on his hit list, this bar, but maybe he'll have a look at it. And he gets a drink. This guy's like, immediately walks off with another girl um so he's left there and all the girls are just looking at him and he's thinking okay i don't really want to dance i haven't got that much energy but he starts drinking and another drink he spots this one girl this quite dark skinned girl not tall again again it's a short girl he's going for but she keeps really doing some vulgar signs at him and things and it just attracts him he, thinks, yeah. he walks across the floor across the dance floor to her starts chatting to her drink 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 and he, oh god here we go all right gets a drink for her it's not lady drinks it's just normal drink prices because they don't work there gets a drink and they sort of jig on the edge of the dance floor together and she got her hands all over him and really turning him on he's getting really excited and he thinks what what the hell come on doesn't mention money to this girl he says i stay hotel come on off he drags her this girl was very very rough with him new experience very rough with him a couple of hours of really exciting horizontal vertical aerobics all around the room desk bathroom everywhere in the small <laughs> hotel room fabulous time and things come to a sort of end and uh, he's worn out he knows he's tired now and on the bed he just falls asleep sparked right out 
so the jet lag kick right in. Wakes up in the morning, girl's gone. Looks like it's going to be another episode. Hmm. I thought this was going to be a short story. Oh well, I'll tell you about it on the next one. See you soon.